All right, what's up everybody? Russell here from Abolitionist Rising. Thought I'd drop a quick video because I have to keep on making this comment in various threads on Twitter and Facebook. And I thought maybe, maybe if I make a video, it'll at least save me a bit of time uh, to where I don't have to always explain this or argue this and keep on typing it out over and over and over again. I can just sort of link to a video or hopefully a lot of people see this video and think these things through. But I wanna address, um, and it ha does have to do with the political controversy about Trump versus Biden and whether it's a good argument that you know Biden is so much worse than Trump that you gotta vote for Trump even though he's not great on abortion Biden is so much worse. I keep on seeing that. And the argument usually goes like this, like, listen, Biden is for full term abortion, like abortion through all of pregnancy, like the Democrats, therefore all abortions, um, maybe even abortions after birth. And Trump, while he's not an abolitionist, he is a pro-lifer. He does believe that abortions should be restricted, that, that you should maybe put reasonable limits on abortion, maybe at like say 12 weeks or 15 weeks, and that you should have abortion around for the cases of rape, incest, life of the mother, and everything that can fit into life of the mother. Um, but even though he's not great and that isn't great, it's still way better than Biden. And so I see people posting that, and I think when they post it, they're being they're being uh, honest. They're basically saying Biden's like a demon on abortion, man. He's like for abortion all the way up to birth, and and Trump isn't that demonic. Now I would say that one thing that you need to know, just starting out, abortion at 24 weeks and abortion at 12 weeks are equally barbaric, okay? They're they're pretty much the same, 24 weeks and 12 weeks, in what they're doing to the baby, right? Now, a 12-week abortion with a baby uh, that's surgical is almost identical to a 24-week, except for maybe the instruments you're using for the 24-week child are bigger and might have um, you know forceps or something like that but it's it's not different in the sense that a 12-week abortion and a 24-week abortion both involve like ripping the baby into pieces while they're alive and sort of extracting their body parts whether you're using a high-powered suction device or a curette or like forceps or a combination of all these surgical instruments. Um, now, when it comes to a 12 week abortion that's done with a pill, which we have now produced pills uh, that can murder a child up to 12 weeks. And really you could actually double the taking of those pills and probably go up to 14 weeks. But in those kinds of abortion where you don't have like the, the ripping of the baby, you do still have sort of like just this, it's like this chemical, starvation and just insanguination like it's 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 basically uh it's not any better they're not having their arms and legs gripped off but they're basically just being sort of just shriveled up and then sort of just murdered in the in the sack in there and then passed out in 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 urine into a toilet um and then all the way down the same thing in that chemical abortion is being done down you know through the earlier uh stages um so that's one thing that's one thing to just understand that a 12-week abortion and 24-week abortion are not all that different um now theologically speaking morally philosophically speaking an abortion at 40 weeks and an abortion at uh four weeks are morally equivalent whereas an abortion at four weeks there's less blood and probably no pain, it's still the murder of an image bearer, the murder of a human being made in the image of God, murdered in the place of the incarnation, murdered in a place where you yourself once were and you passed through. 40 weeks, yes, more painful, but still murder is murder, right? It doesn't become okay to murder somebody 
if you chloroform them first. Like if you if you put someone into a coma and then murdered them, that doesn't make it okay, even though it's not painful. Um, murder is wrong because people are made in the image of God, and to kill someone made in the image of God is to attack God and to attack your neighbor who bears the image of God. So a 40-week abortion and a four-week abortion are morally and theologically equivalent, right? And we don't need to be drawing lines about like one kind of murder is worse than another kind of murder. That's, that is a, that's one that's just inane. Second, it's a slippery slope of, you know, of the worst kind. Thirdly, and this is the most important point, and it's why I wanted to make this video, and it's what I want people to understand, and so I have to stop explaining it. When, say, Joe Biden says that, uh, you know, he's for abortion on demand for any reason whatsoever. Maybe he doesn't say that directly, but say the Democratic platform is abortion on demand. And Democrats are for abortion at any time stage during pregnancy and some democrats are even for abortion after birth um what you'll see um is is one just real quick clarification that's not exactly true a lot of democrats are actually for maybe putting restrictions on abortion at a certain period maybe 20 weeks 24 weeks a lot of them will say at viability right so a lot of them will say i don't think abortion is good after viability because they don't believe in the value of human beings just because they're made in the image of God. They believe that human beings who can live on their own outside of the womb are valuable. Now, of course, a baby at, you know, outside of the womb at 24 weeks is gonna be the NICU, um, and a baby outside of the womb at two and a half years is still not able to live on their own. But I think they just generally mean a baby that uh, wouldn't die instantaneously if they were outside of the womb uh, is a is a life worth protecting, and so that's actually the position of a lot of Democrats. And their and their their desire to keep abortion legal isn't generally speaking they want abortions through all uh, all trimesters of the pregnancy. They kind of want the abortions that hap that that do happen um, to remain legal, and. And that is, uh, I think, we don't need to misrepresent them because they're actually being more accurate because they know that most abortions, and you hear, you hear secularists and you hear liberals and progressives say this all the time, um, that they know that most abortions happen early on in pregnancy. In fact, we're talking most abortions happen in like the first trimester, like the vast majority happen in the first trimester. There's some, there's a small percentage that happens between like 14 and 20 weeks, but the vast majority, I think it's like 93% happen in the first trimester in the first 13 weeks. And then you got like 6%, uh, five to 6% that happen between 14 and 20 weeks. And then only 1% happen after 20 weeks. And so, so they basically are arguing for abortion um, keeping abortion as it is legal. Now here is the important point of this video. When you see someone argue that the reason that you got to vote for Donald Trump over Joe Biden is because Joe Biden is worse on abortion than Donald Trump, the thinking goes like this. Joe Biden and his party are for abortion through all nine months of pregnancy. And Donald Trump isn't for that. So it's like this side is like demonic. They're, this side is for aborting babies all the way up to the point that they're born and maybe shortly thereafter. Donald Trump, at least he's not for that, right? That is the argument that's being made. Problem is, massive problem, is that the kind of abortion that Donald Trump is for, that he would suggest, like he would suggest putting like a 15 week federal ban into place. And he would support states banning abortion to 12, 15 weeks or something like that. Whenever a state suggests like a six week ban, he calls them, he calls them out and he opposes them. Whenever a state wants to ban all abortions of 
of course, Donald Trump is very opposed to that and would be a would use the Oval Office and his platform as president to oppose that. Um, he might not send in the troops, but he he is very much going to use his power to speak out against that. But Donald Trump, when he's for reasonable, like you'll sometimes see Republicans use this frame like, um, I'm not as bad as my Democratic opponent who's for all abortions. I am for reasonable abortions. The problem is, is within reasonable abortions is 99% of abortions. And this is what I have to keep typing all over the place. Whenever someone says, the reason that Donald Trump is better than Joe Biden is because Joe Biden is for full-term abortions and Donald Trump is not for that. The missing fact is that 99% of the abortions that happen would still happen under Trump and there is no difference. So it's basically like, it's a weird sort of straw man. It's like basically saying my candidate is a compromiser and isn't gonna do everything, but at least he's not going to do what Biden would do. But what Biden would do is identical to what Trump would do if you're just counting abortions. So you can look this up, you can just Google, you know, you don't have to take my, you know, word for it. You don't have to take my stats for it. You can look it up and you can see what the CDC says. You can look at Guttmacher and what they say and you can look at you can look at these things because it's important to have facts behind your feelings. Um, someone may feel that Donald Trump is so 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 much better than Joe Biden and that somehow justifies them voting for Donald Trump. But if they look at the facts, it might come down as 99% of the abortions would happen under Donald Trump and Biden. And so Biden, maybe 1% more would happen. And maybe that 1% is enough for you. But the problem is, is that say Trump got in there and he criminalized that 1%, which there's never been any indication that he would. Um, because usually that 1% is the sort of life of the mother situation. Like an abortion performed after 20 weeks is usually because of some kind of severe fetal abnormality. The doctors are saying the baby's going to die, have a terrible life and all this kind of stuff. And so there's a sort of a late term abortion. That's usually what it is. And Republicans and certainly people like Donald Trump have been, you know, very much in favor of those kinds of abortions, right? You know, kill those kids. So like, I don't think there's any difference in the actual number of abortions that would take place under a president who says I'm for abortion all the way through pregnancy and a president who says I'm for abortion through 15 weeks. Because a president who says they're for abortion 15 weeks, the facts is for a million abortions a year because a million abortions a year happen prior to 15 weeks. Now, if you go and you look that up, you might be astounded at some of the facts there. You're like, well, do a million abortions still happen after Roe v. Wade? Well, yeah, like actually the number of abortions went up after Roe v. Wade. They went up in one sense, like counting them, like the counted abortions seem to have gone up, but it's harder to count them now because the, 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 the number of chemical abortions taking place have certainly gone up to where like it's a steadily, it's a steady, uh, over the past decade, there's been a steady increase of the number of chemical abortions, chemical abortifacients becoming more effective, more widely used, um, and the sort of thing that you can order online and take. But here's the big kicker. The chemical abortions that you can order online and take and murder your child up to 12 weeks in the womb those chemical abortions, when you order that pill and you take it, nobody's counting it. That doesn't get counted, right? So the number of abortions in our culture could have skyrocketed because we do know that the number of people ordering pills has certainly skyrocketed. So like if you live in a pro-life state like Oklahoma, the number of abortions, uh, if, you, if you read pro-life propaganda, they'll say the number of abortions has declined because the number of counted abortions 
has declined because we no longer have freestanding child sacrifice centers where they count the number of chemical abortions and surgical abortions. What we now have is pills being stockpiled at the campuses and flowing in the mail and people taking them and Oklahoma, like other pro-life states that have banned abortion following the repeal of Roe, have seen a massive spike in visits to abortion pill providers online and recorded orders of those pills. I am, you know, you see me out talking to people on college campuses, city streets, festivals, all that kind of stuff all the time. I talk to the people, I talk to people in Oklahoma all of the time and I do not get the sense that people are not aborting their babies. I think they're aborting their babies. They just are doing it in their own hotel rooms or houses or bathrooms or whatever. They're not, they're not, uh, they're not having to go walk by preachers and protesters and that sort of thing here in Oklahoma. But the number of abortions hasn't declined. But anyway, I hope you understand the importance of a video like this. Sorry, it's not very entertaining, but it's very important that you think these things through. Like if you're going to make an argument that say one candidate is better than another because under this candidate, a million abortions would happen and under this candidate, a million abortions would happen. Your argument is not factually based. It's just an emotional appeal to make you feel better. But what you really should do is you should look at that situation and when someone like Donald Trump suggests banning abortion after 15 weeks, they're basically saying, keep virtually all of the abortions that are happening, happening. And that kind of messes up the persuasion of your argument. So stuff to think about. So hopefully you sat through all that and you learned a little bit something from uh, my minivan here, but we'll get back to posting regular street engagements and uh, more highly produced material in the future. See you after the upcoming conference on April 18th through 21st.